good when we make healthy food choices, so let's think about pesticides and our health. Residues of man-made pesticides may end up in our food after they've been applied to crops elsewhere in the farm or production chain. The levels of residues are measured to meet safety standards, such that you would have to eat 9,000 loaves of bread every day to even stand a chance at poisoning yourself. Many people don't realise that man-made pesticides are not the only pesticides in our diet, nor are they even the most toxic. They make up less than 0.001% of all the pesticides you eat, the rest being of natural origin. On the shelves, our food contains shitloads of chemicals, from natural toxins like the solanine in your spuds, to additives and or residues of agricultural chemicals, each of which can potentially, albeit rarely, present health risks to consumers. Potatoes, tomatoes, carrots, celery, parsley, parsnips, mushrooms, cabbage, and on and on and on, all contain carcinogenic natural pesticides that are present at levels enormously higher than the amounts of man-made pesticide residues. But why do we have man-made pesticides in our food at all? Well, many studies show that responsible pesticide use can deliver these diverse and significant environmental and health benefits that we should support. We'll think more about the environment in another video, but speaking specifically of the use of the herbicide glyphosate in Africa, one organic farmer summarised the pesticide trade-off like this. Some some people are worried about the potential health effects of glyphosate, but these concerns are tiny compared to the real and undisputed dangers of soil loss and hunger, and these are dangers that glyphosate helps us to combat. Another publication put it like this, if pesticides were abolished the lives saved would be outnumbered by a factor of around a thousand by the lives lost due to poorer diets, secondary penalties would be massive environmental damage due to the land needs of less productive farming. It kind of makes you wonder why Greenpeace are trying to ban pesticides worldwide. It's no surprise that scientists, health professionals, toxicologists and risk experts support responsible pesticide use, but survey after survey shows that we the public can be poor judges of the hazards that they represent. We spend a disproportionate amount of time freaking out about this tiny, trivial slice of our chemical pie. One obvious reason why this is, is that we the public get fed a steady stream of hogwash, hokum and hyperbole by a group of amoral scumbags masquerading as health experts and phony environmentalists, usually either collecting money or trying to sell a product such as more expensive so-called pesticide free food. These campaigns play on a technique of misrepresenting the risks and they prey on public misunderstandings about chemicals and toxicology. Glyphosate has been blamed for everything from criminal behaviour to spousal abuse. The Soil Association, the UK's main organic food advocacy group, have a lot to say about glyphosate and you can see that they want you to feel very alarmed. Let's take this statement for example, which is utter nonsense. It's nonsense because toxicity is a matter of dose and there are safe and dangerous levels of just about everything. Water is poisonous at high doses. While the most deadly toxin known to mankind, botulinum, one of nature's, one teaspoon of it would kill a quarter of the people on the planet, is harmless if you only take one molecule of it. In fact, people regularly do inject it into themselves as Botox, and it's also used as a medicine. Dose is very important. According to research, glyphosate is lethal at 5,600 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. It's surprising to many of us to realise that by this measure it's half as toxic as table salt, 9 times less toxic than solanine, 29 times less toxic than caffeine, 56 times less toxic than the formaldehyde which occurs naturally in things like pears, mushrooms and fish, and 140 times less toxic than vitamin fucking D. It's 4.5 million times less toxic than botulinum, and when you put it like this it doesn't seem that scary at all. The Soil Association also run this bizarre not in our bread camp Campaign, hoping to frighten innocent consumers into boycotting conventionally farmed food and buying more expensive bread from their organic industry backers. Safety standards don't really use lethal doses as a basis for regulation because it's highly unlikely that we'll ever be exposed to such high amounts of everything, like when they say you'd have to smoke half a ton of weed to reach a lethal dose of THC. Today we use more relevant measures which account for smaller exposures and health impacts over long time periods. Enter the No Observed Adverse Effect Level, or the NOAEL. For any given chemical, this is discovered through experiment as the amount of the chemical that can be administered every day and have, and clue is in the name, no adverse effect over a lifetime. However, to be super duper sure, safety standards take the NOAEL, which by all accounts is safe, and then set the acceptable daily intake a hundred times lower. And it is this ADI that is defined as the amount of something you could have every day for a lifetime and have no effect. 
For glyphosate, the NOAL is 30 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day, and the ADI is then set by food standards agencies at 100 times smaller, at 0.3 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day. Given all of this, it's obvious why the Soil Association chose not to mention the fact that the highest levels detected in some loaves of bread were around 0.05 milligrams per kilogram of bread. Far, far, far below the safety limit, you know, a kilo of bread, and you're still nowhere near poisoning yourself. And this is why it would require you to consume thousands of loaves of bread every day, and is why the Soil Association is full of shit. I can't see anything to worry about. For other pesticide residues used on other crops, the figures are similar. You'd have to eat 7,000 tomatoes per day for your whole life just to reach the ADI. 13,000 kilos of carrots, 3,000 heads of lettuce, 500 apples a day just to reach the level that's been shown to have no health effects. So when it comes to pesticides in our health, trying to avoid pesticides is a non-starter, as most of the pesticides we eat are all natural. And in fact, some crops increase the production of these natural toxins when we stop applying synthetic pesticides. Pesticide-free and organic label claims have nothing to do with health. They are not health claims. It should trouble all of us to hear of mothers who have been targeted, frightened and shamed and scared into buying higher priced food with a fake promise of better health. There are plenty of people willing to cash in on our fear and the Soil Association appears to be one of them. But worry not, I hope I've convinced you that the science is on your side and given you some knowledge to help you spot these sneaky mountebanks. I for one am happy to take on this negligible additional health risk because I know that protecting the environment and making food abundant and affordable is far better for our health as a whole. I'm Derek and I'll see you later.